goiter is from the very beginning, from the very origin, is lying in the metro style space. Now you know the origin of planet, you know the arches, third, fourth, you know how it rolls down and then makes into uh, that embryology has to be understood. So from which arch does it originate? Fourth and six. Four and six. You're right. So it can go down. And this is a parathyroid, third and fourth, right? Yes, it does. <coughs> so I mean that is how they get together. Otherwise they have no business to be with each other. And that becomes the reason for an ectopic parathyroid also once in a while because sometimes it goes down since it has to go further down. So along with the thymus, it may go down into the thorax. That is why in the fifth parathyroid, if you ever look for, is in the thyrothelmic ligament, which should, we should look for if we are doing surgery for uh, uh, hyperplasia or parathyroid, where we need to remove all so that we don't have any, any recurrence of hyperplasia. Now coming back to the retrosomal goiter. The retrosomal goiter would be requiring some kind of an extra approach in assessment and as well as in management. There is an incidence of, I mean a slightly higher incidence of malignancy in retrosomal goiters, but one doesn't know whether it is because they are detected late or one is not able to find out. But retrosomal goiters have been found to be prone to developing malignancy or they can coexist. You understood? What did I say? Either it can uh, give rise to malignancy or they can coexist. Malignancy and and so there may be a possibility that they coexist. So it becomes an indication for surgery anyway. So retrosomal goiter is an indication for surgery regardless. Yeah. Coming to the second thing, if you are dealing with retrosomal goiter, you should be prepared in your mind to get into the thorax if required. If it is a retrosomal extension of goiter, you can go through the neck because the blood supply is from where? From superior thyroid artery, yes. inferior thyroid artery, both of these are in the neck. The venous drainage is an issue. The superior thyroid vein drains into interjugular vein, middle thyroid vein drains into interjugular vein, but the inferior thyroid vein drains into innominate. So that goes down to the distal. So that is where it can lie. That is why they divide the grade or the great retrosome goiter based on whether it is above the innominate vein or at the level of innominate vein or below the innominate vein. Clear? Yes. Now many times when you put the patient in that position, it becomes possible to get below the goiter. So it can be uh, some sort of a retrosome on your goiter which is manageable still with, with your how do you investigate? What is it that you do differently? <laughs> the only difference, you do all investigations that you do for thyroid malignancy and you know what I'm saying. Triple yes. assessment, yes, sir. history, clinical examination, followed by imaging, which is where you have thyroid score, and uh, followed by uh, thyroid function test to know the that the patient is not toxic, and then do FNAC, which is assessed by Bethesda score. So this is it. Quadruple is where you add up the DNA, ploidy, and gene panel and everything. Uh, some people take the fourth arm of quadruple as the thyroid function test, so it depends. So that is not, don't get confused with that. Right. So the workup is just the same, but now the imaging needs to be done more carefully. You do ultrasound not only to find out the vascularity, the position, the size, the pattern of the nodules, but also to look for its extent. And the imaging of choice is contrast in a CT scan of the thorax and neck so that you are able to grade your, you know, uh, yeah. And then you, based on that, you take a decision. So it is, if it is above the innominate vein, it's always the cervical approach. If it is below the innominate vein, you must keep the sternotomy and manipulotomy or something to open up and see the control. And the one which is in between depends on what is the pattern of the... Yeah. Sometimes, you know, roughly, that is what the thoracic surgeon was also discussing. If it goes down and has a conical approach, it is one which is just pointing downwards. But if the base is wider, then there is an issue. Like we had that case, where the retrosomal extension was very difficult to reach. So with sternotomy, you can remove that tissue.
Is that clear? Yes. So the surgery we will, the, our, our approach will be through the cervical incision only. I'll try to make it a little lower. <coughs> I'll cut the strap muscles and I'll do the thyroidectomy normally. Right lobe is not going down. So I'll do the right side first by following the same approach. And once I do the right side, then I mobilize the left. I take care of the superior pole, middle third vein. And for the inferior, I'll be able to pull the gland up and see for so that's where I need good assistance to retract properly without damaging anything. When you're putting a retractor in that space, be careful, the innominate is sometimes pulled up and goes down. So you should be very cautious in retracting. But with a cautious hand, no retractor is harmful. Because after all, you have vein up for the vein. Yes. So that should, that can also hurt if you don't take care. And there's nothing like a traumatic instrument. It's a myth. Less traumatic instrument. There is nothing atraumatic. So you will use something softer, but more importantly, your softer hand. But yet you should be able to show. So we go bit by bit on the left side, free it from all around. The goiter in this case is also, you can share that uh, CT picture of this patient. Uh, the goiter here is very, very close to trachea, very close to esophagus. It's expected left side, it will be lying bang on the esophagus, which trachea is to the right. So it is to the left. Left is larger. It would have pushed the trachea further away. So it will be directly in contact with esophagus. And that would mean what? In the tracheoesophageal groove, you have the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So you have to take care of the nerve also. So the right side, you should do a very, very good job. And left side, you must try to achieve complete removal because the retrosternal part cannot be left behind. Or the good news uh, with a with a well-differentiated tumor is that radioactive iodine is a good backup. So we should try to do, if you don't, if you're not able to see properly on the right side or assess properly, then we do heart light and hill procedure, which is the left side, we can take out as much as possible, but making sure that we keep the parathyroids and recurrent laryngeal nerve intact and external laryngeal nerve intact, if we don't have that kind of a surety on the right side. Do you understand what I'm yes, saying? Sir. So our approach is going to be just the same. We are keeping a standby, should not be said. Any question? If I understood. No. You have a question? Mm, sir, so patient about her past history, sir. She had undergone a procedure, like it was a metabolic surgery. That was done a year ago. You can Back be blunt then, about it. She underwent yes. bariatric surgery. Bariatric surgery. And she lost a lot of weight, but she developed uh, what is called the LAD procedure, the LAD phenomenon, she has developed insulin dependent diabetes and that is our major concern. She's got uh, very high blood sugars that are fluctuating. She's in, on insulin. So we have these risk factors, that is correct. And uh, sometimes people also argue about whether we should do contrast in our CT in these patients because they have iodine issue. But that's an investigation which shows the retrosternal goiter the best. If you have seen the MRI, you can share both the pictures. But CT is what a surgeon reads better. We are able to understand the anatomy better yes. because that's how it should be looking. MRI is a little bit of you trying to understand. So with that background, we need to be extra careful. A patient needs good perioperative management and postoperative management. But it's like any other diabetic patient. We are operating for papillary carcinoma of thyroid. So that cancer gets the priority. But somehow it is amazing that it got missed for so long. It was a, it's a quite a large, large tumor. But people also carry it. Uh, it was only when they were trying to put in a central vein they realized there's a bulge there. And they got an FNAC done and it came out to be a paper ACA. Right? If I may add, sir, she was obese also. So, so she could have missed due to the weight and extra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, is, was, that is the reason. In fact, that was the reason why it got missed out because of obesity, the neck also had a lot of fat. So, and then obesity took the precedence. Mind was totally there. Yes. So when you talk of metabolic surgery, metabolic surgery is about metabolism in general. So all glands should be seen carefully. Mm -hmm. They don't have just the, you know, diabetes related issues. They also have thyroid related issues. Because the weight is more. Yes. So relatively speaking, they'll always be hypothyroid. So hypothyroidism itself leads to gain in weight. 
Clear? Yes. Right? 